Hi again, everybody. Welcome back. And we are right in the middle of the most important sessions, certainly, in my view, that maybe it's the heart of everything I can do with this whole series, to teach you the difference between real medicine, legitimate medicine, and psychiatry, which really is not medicine. It's pretending to be medicine. That's a pretty serious accusation. But that's what I want to illustrate for you and get you to think about and make up your own mind. I don't want you to trust me, and that's because I don't want you to trust them. You don't be intimidated by terminology. I'm going to teach you some of that. Don't be intimidated by credentials. Think about all the situations where the best and the brightest and the most powerful have led all of us down the path. Apply the same hard thinking, and that's what I want to help you with. So, what do real doctors do, medical doctors? The heart of what medical doctors do is they find out what it is that is wrong with you. They find the cause of your distress, your problem. And then they do something about it to the best of the ability that the, their science has at the time you're living. Now, to find out what's wrong with you, that means they find the cause. They understand the cause. They don't just rephrase your distress. They find the cause of your distress. And that's what's called the diagnosis. That's what it means. Anything less than the cause is not a diagnosis. Now, it's true that real medical doctors don't always have an easy time of finding the cause. It depends on what era they're working in, what the tools are. And when they can't find the cause and they have to do their best with, say, the nature of your distress, they acknowledge that and do the best they can. But if you had a medicine which never knew the cause, then it would not be what we consider scientific medicine. And that is what psychiatry does. Psychiatry does not treat diseases because there aren't any diseases that have been discovered. They are desperately looking for diseases. And I don't fault them for that. But because psychiatry, with the very big help of the drug industry and government, claim that they have found diseases, that is completely wrong from a scientific point of view and immoral from any kind of a human point of view. So the fundamental difference between what a real doctor does is they find the cause of your distress and then they use the tools that they have to treat. And they have a way of telling how much or how little the treatment is working. Now, let me illustrate a little bit of how psychiatry claims that it is doing something that is not by referring to a book called The Broken Brain. It's a book, and, and again, if you remember some of my previous sessions with you, I like to use what I call the best and the brightest to illustrate if there's a problem. Because it, it, it points to the fact that we're not claiming just a few people are doing something wrong, a few bad apples in the barrel, as they say, but people who represent the mainstream. And you remember that in the past, I talked about Benjamin Rush, a signer of the Declaration of Independence, 
a physician who claimed that when he removed a lot of blood from somebody, so much so that they passed out, he then concluded, well, the reason they were have a problem is because they had too much blood in the brain. And we all laugh at that. We know they didn't have too much blood in the brain, but what he did to them caused them to have too little blood in the brain. And he defined that, we call it vascular shock. And he defined that as a treatment and an improvement. Well, the author of this book, The Broken Brain, was Dr. Nancy Andreessen, a medical doctor and a psychiatrist, and someone who specializes in the attempts to discover brain disorders, which would explain mental disorders. And I'm going to give you some examples from the book to demonstrate just how inconsistent unscientific, and how desperate psychiatry was at the time this book was published, 1984, which was right at the very time, as I was saying, it was an outgrowth of the 60s, but these things take time. By 1984, when this book was published, she was claiming, along with the mainstream of psychiatry, that not only were they looking, but they had found brain diseases which they were effectively treating with their treatments. So first, here's what she says is the model that she and her colleagues in psychiatry were the revolution that they were starting. She said that the biological model assumes that as our knowledge progresses, some type of malfunction in the brain will be found. The current biological revolution in psychiatry places great emphasis on the search for the physical causes of mental illness. Now, she then moves on to say, what are the tenets of this biological model? Now, a tenet is not necessary, is not claiming that you have something. It's saying this is the philosophy, this is the beliefs, this is the, the principles of what this biological model is. And here's what she says, that the major psychiatric illnesses are diseases. When a patient complains of such symptoms as low energy, insomnia, or hearing voices, the psychiatrist assumes that the patient has a specific illness. Illness now, a brain disorder. So she's saying that's the assumption that she and her, the people thinking like that, uh, that's the assumption they will make. Then she says, the treatment of these diseases emphasizes the use of somatic therapies medications and electroconvulsive therapy. Because these diseases are considered to be biological in origin, the therapy is seen as correcting an underlying biological imbalance. So far, she's not claiming they found anything. She's acknowledging this is what we're looking for. This is what we think we're going to find. And if that's all there was, I wouldn't be sitting here with this book in front of me. She goes on to say, this is what the psychiatrist in the future is going to be like when they have this kind of model, this kind of thinking. After spending an hour or two taking a careful, a careful history of the patient's symptoms, the doctor may pull out a prescription pad briefly explain his diagnosis and write a prescription. So now you begin to say, well, now wait a minute. She only says that the patient is giving their symptoms. She hasn't said anything about finding the cause. Yet out comes the prescription pad. So there's a shift there from what they hope to find to what she's saying they will be doing. 
Incidentally, that is what they're doing. Since 1984, more and more, that's what psychiatrists are doing. Next, she says, as, she says, as biological psychiatry has progressed during the past 20 years, various specific kinds of medications have been developed to treat the different specific illnesses that have been recognized. Now, I doubt if there are many people who've read this carefully enough to realize what has gone on here. But now you have no excuse because I've told you and you can replay this tape and you can get 50 people in your living room and play it again. And that's what I want you to do. Get, get a copy of this book. Because she has now told us that in the last 20 years, they found the diseases. And they have drugs which go to the specific disease. And that is wrong. Because right now, 2018, psychiatry has to admit when they talk to each other, but not to you, that they have not found one biochemical or neurological or neurochemical disease that is the cause of any mental disorder. Not one. But yet, she's claiming that in the last 20 years, leading up to 1984, they've not only found it, but they've got drugs which go right to it like the magic bullet, as they say in medicine, go right to the disease and treat the disease. So this is only in the introductory chapter talking about the model. Let's move on and tell you a little more about just how much, as a medical doctor, Dr. Andreessen, she understands what real diagnosis is. She went to the same kind of medical school as everybody else, I and every other medical doctor. And in the chapter she calls the revolution in diagnosis, she starts off by talking about what real doctors do. She says, the process of learning to be a doctor involves learning how to do two things. To make a diagnosis and to give treatment for the illness diagnosed. Now, isn't that exactly what I told you? Yes, that's exactly what real doctors do. They don't make up phony things and call it a diagnosis. They find the cause and only when they found it is it a diagnosis. All right, so she goes on and she says, to a doctor, this word, meaning diagnosis, describes his most serious, exciting, and even sacred task. It means literally to know about, to know through, to understand. Exactly what I'm saying. I'm just wording it by saying the cause. That's what a diagnosis is. It's not the symptoms. And she now is when Dr. Andreessen is going to leave legitimate medicine into psychiatry, but she's not admitting it because psychiatry wasn't admitting it. This is not an attack on Dr. Andreessen. This is an attack on psychiatry of which she represents this movement. The psychiatrist is first and foremost a diagnostician one who explores the greatest uncharted territory remaining in medicine, the dark continent of the disordered brain. Her work is a journey into the heart of darkness. It is a darkness of uncertainty, for we are still discovering how to recognize and define the specific diseases that afflict the human brain. She just told us that in the last 20 years, they found the diseases and they have the treatments for the diseases. But now we learn they're trying to find them. A little sleight of hand appears to be going on. And finally, by the time we get to the end of the book, she's actually telling us what's going wrong in the brain. 
This is what she says. Mental illnesses are due to disruptions in the normal flow of messages through this circuitry. And these breaks in the brain can occur in many different ways. The nerves forming command centers may become ill or wear out and die. The wires may lose their insulation. Some neurons may, in a sense, become overheated and send or receive too many chemical messages. Short circuits may occur so that new connections are formed that should not be there. Or command centers may become disconnected from one another through the loss of the wiring between them. Mental illness is truly a nervous breakdown, a breakdown that occurs when the nerves of the brain have an injury so severe that their own internal healing capacities cannot repair it. So there we have it. This is the kind of nonsense that psychiatry has been promoting for the last 50 years with greater and greater effectiveness because of the money, the public relations, the pharmaceutical industry, patient support groups which are funded about 75% by the drug industry, the uh, seduction of individual psychiatrists who become what have been called key opinion leaders, people who uh, are paid to put on seminars for doctors and psychiatrists, seminars that are required in order to get continuing education credits. So it goes right to the heart of manipulating psychiatrists. But the thing that this kind of thinking did more than anything else, and is going to be the subject of the next session, which of course you must be there for, is the creation of a book which not only has made millions of dollars for the American Psychiatric Association, but has been the fundamental tool to manipulate the public and now the entire world. It's called the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of the American Psychiatric Association. It's the only diagnostic manual that doesn't have any diagnoses in it. Because how could there be a diagnosis if you don't have the disease? A diagnosis is the disease. Psychiatrists haven't found any diseases. So what do they do? They simply send back to you the public, the patient, the friends and the loved ones of the patients, a rephrasing of the distress, a rephrasing of the symptoms, and call it a diagnosis. Now, let me ask you in closing, are you smart enough or aren't you to understand that spitting back, back to you the distress is hardly giving you a diagnosis? Of course you are. But so many of us, haven't understood that. And it's not your fault. If you're not a medically trained person, why would you recognize this linguistic manipulation, this sleight of hand? But we're going to keep going next time and tell you more examples. So I'm going to teach you some of the vocabulary. What is treatment, et cetera, et cetera. So please come back. I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.